So Jonathan Palmer there in pole position for the race. Already won the European Formula 2 Championship. It would be incredible if he won this race because that means that he will have won half the races that count towards the 1983 European Formula 2 Championship. It would really mean quite something, I think, to him. And I think a feat not uh, attained by anybody, as far as I know, during the course of the European Formula 2 Championship, which has been running for some 14 years. Palmer there with Ron Tornek, the man who is the owner, the designer, the engineer of the uh, Rort car company that has proved so successful in Formula 3. Indeed, they totally dominate the majority of the Formula 3 grids, both in the British Championship, the Italian Championship. They actually lost the German Championship to the Anson cars, but they win everything else, including Formula Pacific racing, Formula Mondial racing, Formula 3 and Formula 2. So the Rort car company going very well in the 1983 season as they did in the 1982 season. Mike Fackrell knowing that all he really has to do is finish ahead of Beppe Gabbiani to make it a Casio Rolt Honda 1-2 victory in the 1983 series. And in the depths of the hills around Florence we found our American commentator John Bisignano from Valvoline and he talks to both Palmer and Fackwell. Jonathan Palmer just crowned European Formula 2 champion You've totally dominated the second half of the season. What's the difference between the first races and this last half? I think as usual in motor racing, it's a combination of a whole lot of things. Uh, the first part of the year, we weren't familiar with running on Michelin tires, which are, of course, the best tire within the formula at the moment. We took a while to understand the product and get the most out of it well. We also took a while to settle down and get our car tuned and the suspension set up in the optimal state and particularly by mid-season we were getting a lot of weight off the car. It was a bit heavy earlier on. Um, and I think, thirdly, the, the engines have been, uh, were, were being developed for the first couple of months and it was by about Jerama that the final setup had been established and we never really changed them since. Does having four wins in a row, that confidence build up to almost a state of where you expect to be on pole position, you expect to lead, yes? No, I wouldn't put it like that. I don't, I don't expect to be on pole position. Um, after any of the wins, I was always only too well aware that it's very, very easy to be beaten. Of course, I, the, the more success I have, the more and more determined you are to maintain that, that level. And I always strive, and I would, I would be very disappointed with, with anything less than, if not pole position, certainly the first two or three. Um, but I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't say I'm presumptuous. Jonathan, what do you think of this Mugello track? It's a fast one, yes? Yeah, it's pretty quick. It's, it's one of the best, if not the best, in the whole European calendar, F2 calendar, I think. It's quite a long track, nearly four miles. Got some very, very quick bends. The fourth gear stuff really is, is hard work, and you pull a lot of G-force around there. But it's also got a lot of chicanes, hairpins. It's got everything, and what's more, none of them are particularly easy, and it's impossible to really get the hard car handling perfectly on the whole lot. So it's always a continual challenge.